hey, welcome back to my studio. If you're new here, my name's Morgan and I make all things party and event. And today I wanna to show you how to put together a balloon table runner and how to size one properly for the table that you'll be using. So thank you to my patrons for making this project possible and let's get right into it. To start off, let's talk about sizing your balloon runner for your table. So there's three common lengths that you can make your runner. One is to use two thirds the length of the table. One is to use the full length of the table, which is what I'll be showing you how to do today. And the third way is to have your balloon garland drape off the end of the table. If you're going to do this, you need to add not only the length of the table, but the height of the table plus one to two feet. So you get a nice cascade down to the floor. We also need to take into consideration the width of the table being used. So mine's 30 inches wide because this is a six foot long folding table, but you have to make sure there's enough room for the place settings on either side of your garland. So mine is actually going to be a very small, narrow garland, so there's enough room for all those place settings. Normally when making this runner, I would use all five inch balloons for it, but because I didn't have five inch in this burgundy color, I'm using a couple 11 inchers, which I'll show you how to make in a miniature size in just a moment. Now I'm gonna take all these balloons and inflate them to two pumps of air or less, so I get a really narrow garland. And because I want this to have an organic look, I'm going to vary up those sizes, so it's anywhere between one to two pumps of air, but really we just want them to be nice and round, so make sure you're pushing the air all the way to the end of the balloon before tying them off. By making the balloons this size, I figured out that I need 18 of these balloons per foot of runner. So in total, I'm using about 108 balloons for this project. Now I've got these 11 inch burgundy balloons, but I don't want them to overpower my five inch balloons. So I'm only gonna put two to three pumps of air in it and then press that air all the way into the balloon so the latex is nice and taut. If you leave the latex too loose, it's gonna look velvety and like it's deflating. So push that air all the way to the end and even let some air out so it's nice and small and then tie a knot tightly against the ball of that balloon. So you should have lots of nozzle with just a nice round sphere of burgundy. Next, we need to tie all of our balloons into pairs. So I'm gonna take two balloons, wrap the nozzles around twice, and tie a simple knot. Once we've got all of them into pairs, making sure that the colors and sizes have a wide range and variety, we're gonna take some of those pairs and turn them into quads. So take two pairs and bring them together so the nozzles touch, and then twist one balloon from each pair together, locking them into a quad. Now, we're going to take enough pairs so that we have 20 quads in total, but the rest of the balloons we're just going to leave in pairs so we can add those to our garland later to fill in any gaps. I'm using some 12 pound fishing line to bring all my balloons together, but you could always use some color coordinating string that you have laying around and that would work just as well. So to start off, I'm gonna take the end of my fishing line and wrap it in a figure eight pattern around a couple of the balloons in my first quad. By doing this, this will secure the fishing line to the balloons without having to tie a knot. So once you've got that secured, we're going to make sure that fishing line is coming out of the center of our nozzles and then I'm gonna add the next quad. So I'm gonna flatten this out so it makes a nice four petaled flower. And I'm gonna nestle this right up against our first quad, making sure that fishing line is coming right to the center of our current quad. So it's touching the nozzles. And then I'm gonna wrap that fishing line in a figure eight pattern around one or two balloons of the current quad before taking it back and wrapping it around a balloon from the previous quad. Then I'm gonna bring it back to where we started. So this is gonna make sure all the balloons are secured nice and snugly together. And that fishing line is always going down the center of our quad. I'm going to keep repeating this step until I get the full length of runner I desire. But there's a couple key things to keep in mind as you're adding your balloons. The first is to keep an eye out for the colors that you're adding next to each other. You don't want too many of the same color of balloon right next to each other, so it still has that organic feel. The other thing to keep in mind is the size of balloons you've got next to each other. Because we want this runner to sit flat on the table and to be straight going down the center of the table, we have to be aware of the size of balloons we're putting next to each other so we don't accidentally put a curve or a bend into the garland as we add balloons. As I was building the runner, I found it was helpful to keep it flat against the table, and that way I had at least one side that I knew was gonna be pretty straight. Now, do your best when you're adding all these balloons together, but don't worry if it gets a little wobbly as you go. Once you've got the entire thing done, you can go ahead and rotate the balloons around until you're satisfied with its shape and overall appearance. 
I'm going to take a close look at my garland and search for any gaps or holes there may be that I need to fill in with some more balloons. So we had some of those pairs we set aside earlier and I'm going to add those into the runner by simply slipping the pair underneath a nozzle of a balloon that's already in that garland. And by twisting those nozzles around, that'll be more than enough tension to secure them in place. At this point, if you wanted an all balloon garland, you could totally stop here. But I love when balloon garlands also include florals or foliage, and so I'm going to add a little bit of a tropical feel using these silk leaves. So underneath my garland, I'm going to lay flat on the table some of these large pieces, and then come back with some of these small floral picks and add them into the garland itself. As I add the foliage to the table, I wanna evenly distribute the different types of leaves and mix up the directions that they're facing so it gives it some nice texture and interest, but also making sure I overlap them so that you can't see the stems of those leaves. Into the garland, I'm gonna slip some of these small greenery picks. You just wanna be careful that you don't have any wires poking out the end of any of your greenery and risk popping some balloons. So I'm just gonna take these picks and gently slide them into the garland, making sure that I always hide the stems and angling them in such a way so that the foliage is always pointing out and away from the garland. And this is gonna give it volume and texture. I'm then gonna repeat this step with a couple other types of greenery and making sure I evenly distribute those along the length of the garland. It's always important when you're adding greenery to something like this that you step back and take a look at it from multiple angles to make sure you have a nice even distribution and overall it has an appealing look. I hope you're inspired by today's project and give this a try. This is a fun and whimsical way to add color and interest to your tables. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe below and don't forget to check out our Patreon group if you'd like to up your party game. Until the next time, you can check out some of my other videos over here. And remember, stay creative everybody. Bye!